Hmm, should I go back though? Hmm. It's technically a long way back. If I go through here, there's the doorway to the lower left there. Okay, yeah. Never mind. Let's see what's in here. Hmm. And there's that door to the courtyard that I can unlock from that side. Furniture. Let's whack you. with a piece of wood. I get more bolts I will have to switch to a weaker weapon Insta cast. Goes us, but that boss fight. I could see through your leg. <laughs> Charlotte, do you know what these are?
They're letters from your mother. My mother? Letters? There's so many. Did you know that your mother was a queen of Hanover? It seems that after you were born in secret, your mother was locked up inside Alden Castle. Even while she was imprisoned there, she sent many letters to you here in the monastery. She never laid eyes on you, but she often imagined what you looked like. She dreamt of the day when she would be able to see you. Her letters never got to you, and she was never told of your death, so she continued to write you letters even after you died. Your mother loved you, Charlotte. What? No. no. I, can't I can't take, take this now. now. She, she loved me? me? No. 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 It, it's, it's too, too scary. scary. Hey, hey. I feel warm. warm. What's, What's happening? happening? No. no. Help me. You're not going to forgive you? You love, love me? me? I hate you. I hate you. you. Don't, Don't pray for me. You. 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 Charlotte. How does it feel to know you are loved? Is this a key item or an accessory? something that will increase more stats like those wind. Right. Anything else in here? Nothing useful. Wait, these are lit now. Can't examine the picture. Do I suck? Oh, okay, never mind. Should I have saved? Maybe. No, I'll be fine. Wow. Ugh. 
Wait, where is this going? Oh, more? Oh. Oh, it's still the bullets. Same thing? Yes. It's a lot of bodies. Wait. Need to reload. Oh, I guess he's already full. Okay. Hmm. I guess I will save here. That was a door. I know it kind of looked like one. But still. I didn't see it on the map here. Yes. I guess it would be better to explore up there first. Maybe? And what is that? Right there. things turn off. Hmm. Ooh, yes. Might have him use the gun for a while, though. God, it lowers it so much, though.
Is this at the top of the stairs? Okay, yeah, it is. What's this then? Sure, I'll take shotgun shells. Finish up exploring upstairs. Is that anything? Nothing. Okay. Here somewhere. Hmm. Well, what took you so long? Roger, the mummy I have in the coffin. Since when have you two been acquainted? I am no mummy. My name is Roger Bacon, and I'm just like any normal old man. Hey, I've been around for 20 years, and I have yet to run across an old man as abnormal as yourself. I see. Well, I've been around for 600 years, and I've seen plenty of abnormal people just like myself. My dear old man, might you be related to the great warlock Roger Bacon, who made such a name for himself in the 13th century? <laughs> you are very knowledgeable. Hmm. I am that warlock, Roger Bacon, you speak of. You mean to tell me that you were born in 1210 and have remained alive and well until the present date of 1898? Actually, to be precise, I was born in 1214. Kudelka, what type of book is this? That's my question. Well, this is no joke! I am the reputable Roger Bacon! Very well, then. If you were truly that Roger Bacon, then you'll be able to tell me with whom and where you studied. Oh, that's easy. I entered Oxford in 1247 and studied under the tutelage of Robert Grosteste. Although a good professor, I would not consider him to be a wise man. I penned my masterpiece, Opus Myers, as well as numerous other books on natural science. Being a visionary pioneer, Hmm. I must say that my work has influenced generations of work that followed, but alas, in hindsight, that work pales in comparison to the work I did copying the immigre document for the Pope. The immigre documents? I figured you would know about that book. Of course. It took me five years to copy the book in its entirety. I know everything there is to know about the book. What is it about? Travels the secrets of life that expand far beyond the largest field. It speaks of the secret rituals conducted by the ancient race of Fomors on immortality. The Fomors would claim the lives of the resurrected as their own. They reversed the laws of nature and the cycle of life. When the Druids took over the Celts, Alexander the Great penned the emigre documents in Greek for placement in the Great Library. Resurrecting the dead. Oh, it is true. The document has long been considered the most dangerous work of literature. It was safely guarded in the caverns of the Supreme Pontiff's quarters. But apparently, the book was not able to withstand the wares of time over generations. And the Pope decreed that a new edition be created by copying the full text. That is where I came in. The Pope requested that I copy the book word for word. And when the work was finished, apparently, 
I was supposed to be killed. <laughs> But I am not one to be dealt with so carelessly. I secretly escaped, and eventually I made my way to the sacred land referred to in the text of the immigre document. <laughs> and the secret rituals? Uh, don't tell me. You need look no further than myself. And you succeeded. Hmm. Though I cannot perform the same on others, yes, I have been able to escape the hands of death. But I have not been able to escape the roots of existence, which are the seeds of change. My body is not immune to change, as you can see by my hideous appearance. I've had nothing to do other than roam the earth for the last 300 years. I've seen all I can make of mankind's cruelty. So, I returned here for some rest. <laughs> well, um, enough of this gossip. I've got some research to do. <laughs> May I ask to be left alone? Is there anything in here besides Roger, wherever he is? Still closed? Yes. Ooh, that's been a while. I feel like the random encounters have gotten lower and lower. so hard my board breaks wow I predicted that it's crazy And that is... oh. I automatically went through. Mm. There was something that I was thinking of doing. Out here. I think.
I wonder if... No, I'm just going to go back inside. I was going to see if I can fight that demon at the end of this 2 again. But I think I might do that off camera. So the door under the stairs on the first floor. It's an odd empty looking room. What's this? Found a gramophone, but it can't be played. Yeah. Research notes. September 10th, 1895, rain. With the monastery renovation completed, I have finally moved in with Ogden and Bessie. It's been a long road since I first procured the emigre file. Even after referencing literature of all ages, the rendering of the text still remains a difficult task. Though it has been four years since I first laid eyes on it, never once has the, its enigma left the recesses of my mind. Contained in it are countless descriptions of the source of the energy that is the secret to life's existence. The Druid's cryptic experiment taken from the ancient, ancient Celts and recorded by Alexander the Great hundreds of years before Christ. Branded a forbidden expertise, it was kept hidden by the Vatican's cardinals in the depths of the Pope's quarters for a very long time. And now I have it in my hands. I have reached Wales, the land referred to in the text. I will fulfill my wife Elaine's resurrection at this monastery built by Dan St. Daniel Scotus. Of course, I am aware that my act could prove insolent in the eyes of the Lord, and however people may censor my actions, the love I have for my wife will never cease. I ask, you, I ask of you, Lord, to turn your eyes away for a short while. November 16th, 1895. Wait, I was about to say, like, uh, 1895? No, it's 1889, 1898. Currently in the game. The more I learn about this monastery, the more eerie the structure appears to me. Ogden mentioned that the hospice had been full of corpses at one time a few hundred years ago, and I have become aware of an oppressing sense of mortal sin as I walk through the underground passageways. I could feel haunting spirits everywhere. But according to the emigre file, the power of such resentful spirits are considered the driving force behind reviving the druids cryptic experiment. I plan to fill this place with the all-consuming ire of these spirits. Even though I may burn in hell for these sins, if Elaine can be brought back to life, I shall have no regrets. December 5th. I found out that the cauldron hidden in the basement held the key to the secret. Even though the book had mentioned it, the well-positioned trick door kept us from locating its whereabouts. The cauldron looks as if it's made of gold. For a second I was thinking the cauldron was the thing right near that acid, but no, that wasn't. It's just a... But upon closer examination, the surface is so old that one cannot determine how long it has been in existence. I would guess that it is a prehistoric artifact made a few thousand or maybe even tens of thousands of years ago and left to sit. 
We must all we must quickly set up an altar and begin preparations for our ceremony. December 16th. I ordered Ogden to acquire some livestock, 320 chickens and 43 pigs were purchased throughout the, a supplier in town. I arranged for ground transportation, but the fog did not help expedite the undertaking. I expect to be busy as soon as the delivery arrives. Animal offerings are an integral part of the Druid experiment. The cauldron must be filled with the freshest blood and flesh. This is where it begins. February 24th, 1896. The third experiment, still no response. Even though I follow directions and offer the proper prayers, there are no signs of the spirits gaining any strength. I must return to the book and reread some parts since I can not proceed if there has been some misunderstanding of the text. Is there a problem with the way I conducted the experiment or are these offerings insufficient? Regardless, I need to think this over. Even though I may arrive at a terrifying realization, it is too late to fear anything now. I have come too far to be impeded by fear. I am unsure, I am sure Ogden will understand. March 19th. Sure is raining a lot here. Return from London. The specially ordered carriage seems to be working very well. I have trapped three women in the baskets and back. I lured some victims out of an alley in the east end, had them sniff some chemicals, and pulled them into my into the carriage. But since I was not used to my new role as an abductor, it took more time than I had planned. I could not have done this without Ogden's help, and I'm deeply grateful for him. March 25th. More rain. I'm still at a loss. I cannot make up my mind. Even if I can bring Elaine back to life, are my actions forgivable? I balk when presented with this dilemma. <laughs> Bessie has been taking care of the women I've kidnapped. It's better than them freezing in some corner of London. I hope this small gesture of kindness will be considered as a as an a what priori act of repentance will be considered as an a priori priori act of repentance. I wonder if my small kindness will have any significance when held up to the horrendous act I'm about to commit. March 31st, I must make up my mind. I must make my mind up. Same thing, but I must. April 3rd, storm, hey. April 3rd, that's tomorrow. Dear Lord, I have, without a doubt, uh, kind of dated when this video is recording. I have, without a doubt, been. I have, without a doubt, committed a crime no human should have committed. I conducted the Druid experiment using the flesh and blood of the victims. I sense the incredible energy of the spirits culminate into one when I poured the women's remains into the cauldron. As I had thought before, it is human flesh that needs to be offered up to fully release the effects of the procedures. What a frightening, arcane process this is. The sounds of fury in the women's death screams have not left my ears, but I must go on. There is no turning back now. April 12th. More rain. Again, more.
Once again, I perform the procedures. I once again round up four victims for London. Even though they are all old with barely a thing to live for, when I contemplate taking their lives, it leaves me sick to my stomach. Maybe due to my doubts that the spirits did not rise to such powerful strength as before, I may have to use a younger, more vibrant source of energy. The book says to fill the cauldron with energy of haunted spirits. I wonder how many victims the cauldron must swallow to be satisfied. June 5th. Always rain. I do not have enough victims. The saintly presence of Daniel Scotus inhibits us from claiming authoritative power. I have concluded that it will be necessary for us to offer many more lives before we are finished here. I have since found 35 more victims for 7 separate experiments, but the spirits have not responded with much strength. For me to accomplish their resurrection, I am in dire need of the culminated strength of the spirits. I must come up with a way. I must come up with a more efficient way to procure victims. July 15th. I finally received the first shipment of my victims. Ogden was right when he suggested that we should offer the lord of the slave trade an enormous amount of money for this matter. He has no compassion for human life. The victims are not given much information and arrive at the monastery expecting a routine night's work. It is not necessary for us to go hunting for prey in town. With a few sugar-coated lies, there are plenty of people that climb right into the carriage. There is no one that will dare speak of what is to become of them. September 9th. <sighs> Pour the remains into the cauldron. The energy levels in the cauldron have clearly increased, which makes me happy, since it pr proves that I am heading in the right direction. It seems that lately I have become more efficient at performing the tasks required for the procedures. However, Ogden and I cannot expect <clears throat> to become much more productive as it is impossible for us to hire help since we must keep this matter purely clandestine. I have decided to place an order for a laboratory table from, the, from an equipment manufacturer in Manchester. It will take about a month to make, but once we receive this, we will be able to manage many more experiments. October 3rd. Butchered three bodies since morning. After lunch, we made repairs to the, the bell tower of the main church. After dinner with Bessie and Ogden, I butchered three more bodies. The lab table has proven its worth. Is that the table that... Ogden put Kudelka on? Hmm. The spirits have certainly increased its strength. At this rate, I may finish preparing for Elaine's resurrection before All Saints Day. October 14th. Six bodies butchered in the morning, five in the afternoon, one after dinner. November 1st. How have I been... How I have been awaiting this day, the day to conduct Elaine's resurrection. The ceremony has finally arrived. The cauldron is brimming with the remains of my victims. This monastery is now consumed by the energies of the preternatural spirits. Even a saint could not hold his ground against the powerful energy of these hexed spirits. I took Elaine's body, which had been preserved in chemicals for this very day, and placed it on the altar. I then began reciting the ceremonial chant. Elaine, you are still as beautiful as ever. I love you so much. Please forgive me for calling you back from the land of the dead. November 5th. 
What is going on? I have lost all hope. All my efforts and dreams have been only an illusion. The tree of life that grew upwards out of the corpse, as if wrapping Elaine's body, was certainly the manifestation of the Druid's cryptic experiments that I had been seeking. If God is capable of creating beings out of nothingness, then this is indeed, then this indeed is a man-made example of his work. But to my horror, the image of my resurrected wife displayed in a flower petal looked just as if, just as she did before, yet it lacked a human soul. Indeed, it was a monster, dear God. Is this the punishment you have chosen for me? What have I accomplished by victimizing nearly 200 innocent people? My only hope in life lay in believing that resurrection was possible and dreaming of the day when my wife Elaine would join me here in life on earth once again. Now I have nothing but a cauldron full of blood and hex spirits and a soulless monster. Is this the end that has been awaiting me? Dear Lord, have you no mercy? I have... I only have one path left to follow. I have lost too much. I cannot even find words to apologize to Ogden, who has lent me his strength all the way. Now I only long to sleep in peace with my wife. Okay. So he's the one that was... Had that thing growing out of him. Something's not right. Might as well. I don't think he's gonna need it. Woman frame reads, my dear wife Elaine. Really? Something's not right? Is it gonna happen when I touch the little bluish platform? Yep. Okay. Nice to see they still kept the freakish monster design from from this and on to oh what? Hmm. Ah, crap. I forgot to give him a weapon. What weapon should I give him? Do fire, I guess. Hmm. A 
that's not too damaging. Creepy. Do anything? <laughs> Barely. Kill him when turn comes up. Poisoned and is dead. Okay, sweet. Wait, didn't I just love, wait, really? Did I just get enough experience for two levels? Hmm. Wow, three levels for him? guess that he has three levels as well. Yeah. Ooh, automatic pistol. Ooh, and reflect. <laughs> 